Hey guys, today we're back with my 2006 V8 4Runner. It's been just over a year since I bought this thing, and I figured I'd do an ownership update and give you guys some thoughts on what it's been like to live with this in 2021. Do I regret selling my Lexus GX 460? Would I recommend for you to go buy a high mileage V8 4Runner? All things we'll talk about in this video. So I bought this for $4,000 December 30th, 2020, and I've put about maybe eleven dollars or $12,000 into it, uh, including the purchase price. I've splurged on a couple items. I put the Dobinson's two inch lift kit, the IMS lift kit on that. That was a pretty penny to purchase and get installed. Uh, we have some really nice Firestone Destination XT tires on here. They're 32 inches, they're 255, 75R17s. These have been fantastic. I've driven a lot of vehicles recently with other all-terrain tires. I've driven the new Wrangler 392 with KO2s. I drove the F-150 Tremor recently with General Grabbers. And none of those match the snow performance and all-weather capability of these Firestone destinations. Uh, it's probably one of the most impressive non-winter tires that I've driven on. It's got a softer compound and it just does really well in the snow. And that's made this 4Runner a really impressive winter vehicle. Um, that's probably one of its strongest suits. The weight, the four-wheel drive system, the grip that it gets on these specific tires compared to a lot of other all-terrains has been just awesome in the colder months. Um, some cons, can't turn off traction and stability control without pulling some wires in under the hood. Um, you can lock the center diff and that'll turn off VSC, but you'll still have a little bit of intervention. So it's not as hoonable as my Lexus GX was, but otherwise I found it to be very useful. And I actually really appreciate the extra storage and space you get out of a 4Runner. I mostly drive this thing and enjoy this thing with these back seats down. I throw my mountain bike in the back. I also have a hitch mount that's been really nice that I just bought. But um, in these colder months with the salt on the roads, I like to keep my bike inside the vehicle and just keeps it from rusting. So that's been really nice. You've got a lot of cool storage compartments in the back of this 4Runner that the GX didn't quite have. I've got some uh, soft shackles in there, the jack stuff. There's a couple little places here to put gloves and random straps. I've got a snatch strap, a, a kinetic recovery rope right there on this side. And I do use this for some off-road recovery work when we take press cars out to the dunes or to an off-road park. If we don't have another vehicle to bring, I'll bring the 4Runner and that'll pull us out if we need it. Uh, we had the Ram TRX out of the dunes earlier this last year and uh, this definitely saved the day when it got beached on the top of a sand hill. Off-road, this thing is super capable, really impressive. On-road, it drives great on the new Dobinson suspension. The power is awesome. Fuel economy sucks. Um, <laughs> it's getting cold. Someone hop inside. I should do a fuel economy test on this. The readout has been pretty accurate in the little display here, even when factoring in the extra tire size over stock. So these are 32 inch tires. I believe it comes stock with 31 inch tires or thereabouts. These are just slightly larger than OEM and you can still fit a fifth tire, same size in the spare compartment. Um, but I've been averaging 12, 13, 14, 15 miles to the gallon, 16 or 17 on road trips. So not great, but doesn't take premium fuel, which saves some money at the pump. I've really enjoyed the ability to put in a double DIN CarPlay head unit. That's been so nice to have over my Lexus GX. Um, it's integrated pretty well. It improved the quality of the sound system. It seems to connect well. Bluetooth operates well. This is a Pioneer something, something or other. I'll put the name in the description, um, but it actually it works really well. It's a little more responsive than some OEM vehicle uh, touch screens. Anyway, I've really liked having Apple CarPlay in this 4Runner. The rest of the interior on this SR5 is pretty bare bones. There's not a whole lot going on here. I don't have heated seats. I have my four high, four low selector and my rear window up and down switch. 
It would be nice to have heated seats. It would be nice to have a heated steering wheel. However, the vents on this 4Runner aim right at your hands on the steering wheel. So you can warm up pretty quickly in the colder winter months. It is 19 degrees out today, and I drove this about half a mile, and the heat started coming on pretty quickly. So that's nice. You've got some cool configurations here for uh, eating. You've got a little table that folds out to put your burger on. You've got lots of storage places here. This never stays closed anymore. Um, nice little center console area. Decently sized glove box for lots of stuff. Yeah, the space in this 4Runner is actually really nice. It's a little bit more roomy than the Lexus GX was. And that has come in handy when I'm hauling things. I moved while owning this 4Runner and uh, really uh, was able to bring a lot of stuff in the back to our new house. So, all right, let's take this thing for a drive and we'll talk a little bit more about my ownership experience. So one of the most frequent questions that I get asked is, do you miss your Lexus GX 460? And I will say, I do miss it a little bit. It was slightly less maintenance intensive. It didn't need as much work. This is, after all, a 2006 4Runner with 246,000 miles on it. So it's gonna need some stuff, but there are just some little things that little gotchas that happen throughout your ownership experience that you can expect some common issues and in the newer generations of GX's and newer generations of foreigners they tend to be a bit more reliable which is understandable so I really appreciated the reliability from the GX um, I also liked some of the features of course it's a much more luxurious vehicle um, it's a little bit more comfortable. The sound system is much better. The Mark Levinson sound system in the GX460 is one of the best premium audio systems on the market, I think, and it's one of the best Mark Levinson units that Lexus sells. So that was something that I do miss, but what I don't miss is the inability to put Apple CarPlay in my GX. I don't know if they figured out solutions for the GX460s prior to 2022 yet, um, there are some solutions for the GX470s to put CarPlay in, but I haven't been on the GXOR forums for quite a while, our Facebook page for a while, so I don't really know what the possibilities are. This is super easy. It's a double DIN unit. You just throw it in. It was 800 bucks installed, and I have CarPlay. It's fantastic. Um, granted, I have a little bit of a simpler setup. I don't have steering wheel controls on this 4Runner, so that was a little bit easier. I do miss having a volume knob, but ultimately I kind of leave my volume or this at the same level all the time anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Um, I don't miss the weight and heft of the GX. This 4Runner is quite a bit lighter. It's about 4,500 pounds in stock form. GX about 5,300 pounds. So there's about an 800 pound difference. The ARB bumper on the front probably cuts that down to about a 500 pound difference, but it's still something that you feel. You feel it around the corners, you feel it over bumps, you feel it in the general weight and heft of the vehicle. And it is nice to be able to have a slightly lighter curb weight in this 4Runner. I'm a little bit torn on what to do now because I'm kind of at that point where, hey, this 4Runner is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Time to get into something new, <laughs> you know? And uh, I would actually really love to get another GX 460, but the 2022s have CarPlay now. I haven't driven one. They have that new interior. It's still the same vehicle. I don't know. 60 grand for a new GX is a lot of money. I would rather spend 60 grand on something that's a new experience, a new vehicle, maybe like a Bronco or something a little bit more fun. Throw a manual transmission in there. Um, I don't really know what I'm gonna do next. I've been tossing around the idea of getting a Tesla Model 3 Performance, a Bronco, uh, a Lexus RCF, a Camaro 1LE, um, a Viper. So many ideas in completely different directions are flying through my head. I don't really know what I want. I think I'm just gonna keep the 4Runner and just save a bunch of money up and if something presents itself, I can, I can swing for it and then sell this. So. That's kind of where I am at as to my next vehicle. I'm still really enjoying having only two vehicles. I kind of would like something that is a little bit less maintenance heavy, something new, something newer. 
more modern, a little bit safer with side impact airbags. Now that I've got a son, it'd be nice to be able to have a little bit more of a family oriented car. Also looking at Durango, like the tow and go pack. Uh, that might be a really good family vehicle. I don't know. Ultimately, this has been a really fun vehicle to own and I've really enjoyed it. I might hold on to it for a little bit longer. I will let you guys know if and when I decide to sell it. But for now, it's been great. I think I would recommend owning one of these if you don't mind a slightly more involved ownership experience. The key with these Forerunners is finding one that doesn't have a lot of rust, and that's tough, especially in Michigan, especially in the Midwest and the Salt Belt. Out West, no problem, you don't have to worry about it. I got really lucky with this one in that it was garaged its whole life, and it was kind of up in northern Michigan where there isn't a lot of salt. They use a lot of sand instead on the roads. So this frame is actually in incredible condition. And that was one of the deciding factors on buying this because I didn't have to worry about a frame rot. I didn't have to worry about difficulty pulling stuff off and apart on this 4Runner. Everything has been easy to work on with this vehicle and that's been a real lifesaver for both me and for the shop that I take it to. Also, one of the first things I did when I bought this was I took it to Crown Rust Control and they sprayed underneath in the door jams and all the panels and uh, I kind of swear by that method of rust proofing for these Toyota body on frame trucks. Uh, I think that's really important to factor in and consider. Um, it can't save your truck if it's already rusted, but it'll definitely help keep it from rusting any further if you've already got a little bit going. If you've got a really clean vehicle, 100% do that if you're in the Midwest or Salt Belt. Uh, I would highly recommend uh, Crown because it's a very thin oil that just creeps everywhere. Um, it doesn't seem to affect the rubbers on these Toyotas, which is nice. Uh, it can have some swelling with uh, cheaper rubbers from GM and, and some other US manufacturers, but uh, haven't noticed it on my GX or this 4Runner in two applications over a year. So, and the GX I did three or four times over three years. So, uh, highly recommend Crown Rust Control. Otherwise, it's a 4Runner. It's been great. It's been a fun, enjoyable daily. Uh, I love the utility of it. I love the feel of it. Driving it is kind of fun. It's just got this old school feel and the suspension that uh, I've been able to put on this has been really nice too in just terms of comfort and uh, driving dynamics. So anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on my 4Runner after a year of ownership. Thanks for watching. I think that'll be it for this one. We'll see you guys later.